The question is very, very simple. What happens when a person did tshuva for something? It doesn't matter. She gave an example with, with one thing. A person does tshuva, and then a week later, fails again. It's natural. It's, everybody has the same thing. The thing is like this. When a person does avira, then he does tshuva, he brings back, he reverses the situation. Now, then he falls up again, then he goes back to the same place, then he has to do tshuva again. He has to constantly do tshuva over and over. In regards to the action of tshuva, then yeah, you fall down, you get up. You fall down, you get up. You constantly do tshuva. In regards to the, to the effect of the tshuva, if I did now a sin, then I did tshuva for it. I was able a whole month to not do the sin, and then a month passed and I did the sin again. So I'm back to square one. But I'm only, I only have the month of the Avera that I have to correct. Not all, I, I don't uh, wake up all my past. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that, yeah, when a person becomes religious, he constantly falls, gets up, falls, gets up. That's the whole thing, that you have like a gap in the period of religious, becoming religious, that you have to have a lot of koach, not to get lolit uh, not to get... Uh, how do you say litiash in English? Not to give up, not to have this uh, despair. Because the Yetzirah will constantly come to push you, and then when you're down, ah, then he kicks you when you're down. The whole point here is to take uh, the advice of Rab Rabbi Nachman. He says, any Yosh Ba'olam, to get up. That's why we read every Erev Shabbat. I think, I think we said it last time. We read in L'cha Dodi, there's one of the, the Psukim, it says, V'itnari me'afar kumi. When a person falls down to the clipot, he did the sin, the, the tzah is to get up, eat nari, shake all the dirt, ma'far kumi, come up, get up from the dirt that you fell, ve livshi bigdei tifartech ami, wear back the clothes of, of our glory and continue going. The whole point is to know that constantly we're going to fall. But every time that you fall, then you fall on a diamond. All you need to do is get up with the diamond, brush the diamond off and to continue. So sometimes the nefilot are good because first of all it makes you stronger. Second of all, every time you fall, you don't fall for nothing. You fall to, to, to pick something up. And the thing is that the floor is full of diamonds. So Hashem will come and push you. For you it will be like, wow, I fell, I, I did the sin again. Hashem is, no, 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 just look real good. I, draw, I, I push you on a diamond. Every nefila, when you fall into the klipot, you have the opportunity to reach out and grab something with you and come out. So a smart person doesn't look at the nefilot as failing all the time and, and the etzera comes to, to make you like, uh, 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 you know, feel bad. Therefore, you should say, wow, I fell. Ah, there's an opportunity to do tshuva now. So this is the level of a Baal tshuva that he, he knows, okay, every time I fail, I have the opportunity to bring something with me. It's almost like going on a vacation. I bring a, a souvenir. So, failing is actually a good thing, if you take it the, ro the right way. If you fall and it breaks your spirit and you're like, okay, now I failed, so I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do this, that's what the Yetzirah wants. But if you're smarter than him, he says, okay, no problem, I failed. And yeah, continue going. Now, the thing is that how it, how it uh, in, in regards to the, to the, to the effect, if you did tshuva on Rosh Chodesh Cheshvan, uh, uh, and the whole month of Cheshvan you're good, and then in the month of Kislev you fail, so you have to deal with this fail. Not with the, you know, you didn't arouse the whole thing. But the thing is that you constantly, it's very hard. That's why I said before, when you're becoming Baal Tshuva, it's like a baby. You do one step, you fall. You get up, you fall. You're constantly going to fall. That's why you have to internalize in your mind, I'm going to fall a lot. But every time that I fall, if I stay on the floor, then the Yetzirah won. If I get up, then I'm the winner. And Hashem doesn't like to see how you fall. He wants to see how you get up. Will I see him later? Who? Yetzirah. At some point you'll see him. Yeah, how he looks like. Yeah, he looks this small. Really? Yeah. <laughs> when you see the Yetzirah, you'll be like, this? <laughs> this was the one who annoyed me? This little thing. This small but so evil. Yeah. The thing is that we create our Yetzirah, you know? It's not that you're born with that, huh? I'm sorry, when you do sin, that's when it's like comes. Yeah, you, you're pumping it up. What about if 
a Kohen, Levi, Israel, okay? If they do the same sin, is there any... Same thing. Same thing? Same punishment? I wouldn't say punishment. Punishment is the wrong way... Punishment is the wrong way to define the situation. I would call it reaction. Mm -hmm. Shem doesn't punish you. Shem doesn't stand like this. Okay? You know? Shem doesn't want to punish you. But if you now take a rock and you throw it at the window, and you smash the window, the window didn't punish you by breaking. You made a, 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 an action that caused the reaction. So people say punishment. It's not a punishment. If I bang my head at the wall, I'll get a headache. It's very simple. So if I did an Avera, I have to deal with the consequences of the Avera. Shem is not standing there with a baseball bat and says, I'm going to punish you. So Kohen Levi, Kohen has an extra Kedusha, Kedusha Yatera. He has a bunch of mitzvot that he has to keep, that we don't have to do it, if we're not Kohanim. Same thing with the Levi. But if I... D yeah. There's not, uh, there's not a mitzvot for a Kohenet. But... Uh, but the thing is that if Chaz Shalom I do an Avera and I'm in Israel and the Kohen does the same Avera, the severity of the reaction is not necessarily going to be because I'm Israel and he's Kohen. It's depending on the actual person. Mm -hmm. Could be a Kohen idiot that is, uh, you know, that is nothing. And a Talmid Chacham that is a Israel, you know, you can compare the level of the Avera. A Kohen has a special power in him that even if he's not educated, he's still a Kohen and he can do certain things. And in, in, in some cases, a Kohen, since he's in such a level, then, you know, his Avera is considered more severe because he's expected to be in a much higher level. But each person is completely, completely different. But the most thing to remember to what you said before, I don't know if I'm answering exactly what you're, you were wondering, but the thing is that don't concentrate on how many times you fall and what happens when you fail on this. You have to say, every time that I fall, this Hashem gave me a little push so I can get up. Because the, the whole point is, Hashem wants to see how you're getting up. Bechlal, the whole concept of the, this Nisyonot all the time, what's, what is hidden behind it is that it's two levels of, of, uh, of work. The first level is what's called itkafia, that you have to subdue the, this, this desire. You have a desire to do this avera, you have to subdue it to overcome it. You want to, I don't know, do A, you're like, okay, you're holding yourself, I'm not doing it. This is called itkafia, to subdue this, this desire, this lust, this desire to do the sin. But once you already subdued it and you took control over it, then you're in the level of what's called itchapcha, it's transforming it, and you, you, you know, Kabbalah ex, uh, uh, calls it itchapcha chashocha lenahora, it's transforming the darkness into light, and from bitterness to, to sweet. So Hashem gives you now a nisayon. Now, if you fail, nothing happened, you fall, get up, get the dirt off, continue going. But if you were able to, to overcome it, to overcome this desire to do this Avera, and you're able to, like a, like a wrestler, to, to subdue it, then you're able to like, kind of like crack it open and take out this godly spark that is stuck in it and to elevate it to Hashem. And this is this Ithapcha, it, is transforming the darkness into light. And everything in this world has a godly spark in it. And the Avera is the wrapper around it. It's basically a present. Hashem, when Hashem gives you a Nisayon, He gives you an 18 karat diamond. It just comes very, very concealed in a, in a dirty cover. Now that's why a person sees the Nisayon and says, Oh, now another Nisayon. Again, I have to fail. Oh, it's so hard. No, it's a present that is a very thick cover. All you need to do is for one second to break it. Oh, and you take... You throw the darkness away, you take the light, you elevate this godly spark back to its place, and you gain the, the schut of doing it. This is called it, it hapcha transforming the darkness into light. And by default, what you do is from bitterness, you, you transform the bitterness into sweetness. So when you fall, it's actually a good thing. Every time you fall, say, oh, Hashem is now giving me the opportunity to do again tshuva. And now I do tshuva, I go into a higher level. Every time you do tshuva, you get elevated to another level. Or, or a person can look at it like you fell and it's 
Kaparat Avonot is not necessarily because you failed. Kaparat Avonot is chas v'shalom, I don't know, you walk, you got a ticket. And you're like, ach, oh, I could have gave that $50 to tzedakah or to buy something. That's Kaparat Avonot, you know, you, you, it, you didn't enjoy something. If a person fails, that's not mamash Kaparat Avonot. When a person fails, means that Hashem brought you to an Isayon, to the opportunity to release this godly spark from this Avera. No, I mean when you fall down, when in nefila. Yes. Maybe I'm using the wrong terminology in, in English. My English is not that great, but when a person fails, he falls down in his spiritual level. Yes. But lama, why Rabbi Nachman says en yehush ba'olam lefer? You have to say, wait a minute, I'm right now on the floor. It means that I uh, that I fell on a diamond. I need to pick it up. Vishazeh en yehush ba'olam. And every time that you fall, you have the opportunity to be a a, a, a higher level of Baal Shuvah. When the Jews got the Torah the first time, they were in the level of tzaddikim. In Matan Torah, they're all level of tzaddikim. They had seven weeks to work on themselves. They elevated, elevated themselves, they were tzaddikim. In the second time, but of the, uh, when they got the second Luchot, they were already in the level of Abal Tshuva. That's why in the first level, they only got the Chumshah Chumshay Torah. In the second time, oh, they got the Torah Shebaal Pen, all the Midrashim, and Zor, and Kabbalah, and Primutal Torah, and everything, because they were already in a level of Abal Tshuva.